Hello and welcome back to another episode of Divinity Original Sins 2, the Definitive Edition. My name is Saiken and we're playing on Honor Mode Plus Difficulty. Hardest difficulty, made even a little bit more hard uh, by hardcore buffing the enemies to scale with our level plus two additional levels on top of that. In this episode, I am asking you, are you ready to go into a cave of undeads and fight two interesting battles of undeads together with me? The answer is yes, the ancient passageway is exactly what you were looking for. So without further ado, here we go. Let's move in and I think we need another fire spell. Yep, there we go. Good. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the passage here. So those here are soul jars and we're going to use uh, them in a later quest. One of the soul jars is the soul jar of uh, the poor soldier that we have found in the southern cave. The other four are soul jars, uh, uh, soul jar, uh, jars of really evil uh, necromancers. So gotta be careful here. As always we kind of divide and conquer, spread out a little bit, make sure that we're preparing the area. Shouldn't be new by now. So this and this and... This year, probably needs some more water here. And yeah, it's really going to be two fights that we're fighting uh, after one another. The enemies are predominantly casters, so you want to be careful there. Uh, one of the areas that's going to be contested is the high ground up here. So I also had strategies that included the high ground. Um, if you stand where I currently position the party, you should be fine. Lows can always go a little bit further back up and it's a stalemate uh, if you're standing up here versus here. AoE spells can hit everything up here, but other than uh, that, uh, you basically can't hit one another. So, Ethan is going to be the one who's going to start all of this. We're going to fight against casters, like I already said, so uh, it's helpful to have an incarnate which has physical abilities. In this case, I'm choosing blood. Ethan should get some extra magical armor. There we go. And this here, if I remember correctly, yep, triggered the first set of enemies. We're fighting against dwarf skeletons, or precisely level 9 dwarf skeletons. And as you can see from their armor rating, most of them have really decent uh, magical armor. Boy, boy, they do have 600 hit points. That's a lot. Good. In terms of Sibyl, this year should work well. And this year should create the uh, correct ground. There we go. Now ready, set, go. 
we are creating a totem. We are encouraging everyone and favorable wins. Let's do something different this time. I haven't tried it the last time, so might as well give it a sh uh, give it a shot. I want to deal with the guy up here. Interesting. I didn't know that the target would have been blocked. Can't jump him directly, but we can jump up here. Sort of uh, line of sight for the rest, and we're, we should be fine up there. Let's get rid of the physical armor. All right, so we do have uh, elemental arrows running. Might as well start hitting both of them. That's one. That's two. We don't want to leave the ground poisoned for too long because this is effectively only healing them. The only reason why we do have it poisoned at the moment is so that Saiken can get off all of his earth spells. There we go. That's one and two. And this here should entangle them. There we go. Perfect. trying to find the right angle so that we can teleport this guy down here apparently not going to work There we go. That worked quite well. Regeneration deals extra damage to him since he's an undead. And going to use the fly ability to reposition ourselves. As soon as they come a little bit closer, we can simply overrun them. Chameleon Cloak immediately breaks because he takes extra damage. And his physical resistance is almost broken. There we go. No more physical armor. Knock, knock down and that's a GG. All right, got the physical armor of this guy down. And now let's just hit them really, really hard with uh, magical damage. Should have used uh, bleed fire beforehand. 
Is, uh, that's even increasing their the damage that they're taking. Nice, that's a hundred damage right there. All right, evasion for Ivan plus some more armor. And thanks to superior repositioning skills. Yeah, we're not going to go directly for him, but we're going to give him a chloroform so that he's sleeping and losing his turn. More damage. All right, Saiken hastes himself. We are out of uh, out of cooldowns, but soon they are going to regenerate. Um, Yeah, we're unfortunately we can't extinguish the fire, so we're not standing in blood, but that's okay. Still a lot of damage here. Good, another totem. We have nicely clustered them up for more AoE damage. And a regeneration deals damage to them. So let's heal them and watch them die. Perfect, they are lined up beautifully. So much so that we can rush through all of them back and forth, essentially knocking them all down. I think we haven't taken a single point of damage other than at the beginning. <laughs> All right, ridiculous. Good, one battle down, another one to go. Again, really quick. Let's get a preparation going. This. And this.
And this Ephon, in the meantime, can already start. This must be the container that holds Lord Withermore's soul. The jar smashed. That's Withermore's uh, soul jar. We promised him to free him. Very nice. Everything's covered in water, just as we were expecting it. Let's go then. There is an option. The last time I tried the battle from up here, there's a decent option to also camp up here, but Ifan can simply jump up here and teleport uh, the enemy down whenever needed. So, with that, let's have Lowe's buff Ifan. And Ifan is starting the second battle. Similar setup as uh, before. We're fighting against mages, one of them being here. And I can already see that Ifan has taken a substantial amount of damage. Let's Make sure that he's going to be all right. We're going to use Adrenaline. Moving up here. We're going to use the Teleportation to bring this guy down here. Let's haste ourselves. And everyone is in combat. Perfect. All right, Ethan here. Starts sealing himself. And we're fighting against four level nine enemies. Pretty much an superior group compared to ours and you can see they almost one shot us with their magic all right it also teleports him back down. We need to heal Sibyl. And let's make sure she has... Uh, we can give her uh, magic armor next turn. All right, so most of them have a huge magical resistance, as you can see. And the physical resistance, this guy here is a bit of uh, an oddity. But the others certainly 
have a huge amount of uh, magical resistance and a limited amount of physical resistance. So Lois is going to take blood arrows in this case, maximizing her physical impact. There we go. Now, as for uh, Saiken, Oh, we almost got him crippled. Too bad. Yeah, Poison Dart will not do anything against them. It's, if anything, it's going to heal them. Oh, bleed fire is blocked. Okay, that was stupid. Uh, I should have waited until his entire magic resistance is gone. Anyway, let's get his physical resistance completely down. That worked out well. We're summoning in another incarnate. Removing all of his magical armor. And now he should be an easy kill. Right, 90, hmm, well, see that's an issue, I really want to deal with uh, with eagle, uh, the eagle-eyed guardian here, I think I can, but he's not dealing enough damage, yeah, need to start trying anyways. 90 uh, physical armor is not so much. On the other hand, the... the... yeah. I was about to say we're probably going to get nuked. That's 109. Holy moly. Ifan really doesn't excel in those two fights. What? 110 insta kill? That is not exactly. What I was uh, what I was expecting. So we got to reset that fight. Two death in one fight should uh, shouldn't have happened.
Ivan died at a really bad position. I should have, definitely should have tried to get him back. Moving up here. Let's make sure Saiken is going to be okay, so we're investing our time to buff him up. Four hundred and eight magical resistance. See, Ethan would have been so so valuable. Can we resurrect him from up there? No. Not really. What we can do is, oh, that should have hit. I was about to say the AOE effects should, yeah, they are normally hitting. Wow, 91, that is harsh. Good. We were out of Comet, by the way, I haven't noticed that. So let's jump in. Losa moves up. Gives everyone soothing cold. Heals up herself and let's make sure that we keep her Magical resistance high. I'm a bit afraid about the Pyromancer, to be completely honest. One thing that we can do though is make sure that we're slowing them down. I think we need to finish this combat with three because I don't see how we can get to Ethan. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, we got to deal with the Pyromancer. He's definitely a concern. Okay, I think the best way to deal with him Take away his physical armor. Done. Knock him down. Done. And continue dealing damage.
It is really annoying that they are one-shotting us. I wish... I mean... I want to play more active with Ifan, and I promise you that the build on normal um, honor mode absolutely rocks. Because you've seen, once their armor is gone, how he was able to control this area here. Unfortunately, when enemies are able to deal 200 plus damage with one attack, and it's getting a bit more difficult to the point where you don't even want to stay in range. I mean, the only reason why we're why we're um, dealing so well with these guys is we're essentially not fighting them. There we go, more physical damage. I'm a bit annoyed I should have really just moved away with Ifan. I was already under the impression that something would happen. There we go. Dealt with this guy. Next up. Let's burn the Cryomancer. There we go, crippled. Yeah, once this one is uh, dead, we might be able to get to Ifan. There we go. Okay, so Let's wait until he finally can move a little bit closer. Still don't want to jump in. 
Let's instead take elemental arrows here. With invisibility, we definitely will be able to resurrect him. There we go. This guy is going to die next turn. Took a lot of damage here. Let's move all the way up to here. Fireball. Very nice. And move back. Now, with her moving down there, we're in a perfect position to. Get Ephon. Saving Private Ephon. See, that's why I don't like it. Like, it seems to be almost impossible to even get up there. So it's four versus one. The archer basically has reset. I'm not going to do the same mistake as before. Good, so last enemy. deal with the loot in a second. Good. So, finally. Time to knock her down. Okay, so that didn't work out as expected, but the chicken form always works out as expected. Very nice, chicken and knockdown, perfect combination.
So, once he is down, we can finally finish this here and get to the loot. There we go. Not much of a challenge once you have uh, taken superior position. Overall combat analysis is, I think we did well with the exception of not pulling Yvonne back on a run uh, with uh, such strong enemies that essentially uh, meant that he uh, he was left out there to die. So in terms of loot, let's see what we've got. We don't have Lawmaster 2, right? Ah, uh, too bad. Interestingly enough, got a lot of um, rare items. So yeah, that's it. We looted everything. We're going to use all three of uh, the of the soldiers relatively soon. But before we end this episode, let me show you where the last soldier, the one that we have freed up, is going to end as a quest which is going to be right here. Inside the cavern and Lord Withermore finally found his rest. With that we got ourselves and Withermore's uh, girdle. Plus one memory is pretty helpful. Let's give it to Saiken. He needs many spells uh, uh, in order to function well as a character. So yeah, that brings us to the end of this episode. We are almost done with the castle. Only uh, the Lord himself remains and that's going to happen in exactly the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. It uh, was a pleasure as always. Uh, leave a comment down below and don't forget to like. Thanks and goodbye.